Hey everybody, Mark here with Matter Report, and today I want to show you the basics of uh, the Pro 2 camera. Now, the Pro 2 camera is, I think, the most important camera that's used by Matter Report overall. Um, it's the rectangly boxy one. Um, as a history lesson, there is a predecessor to this one. This is the Pro 2 unit. There's a Pro model. And you can tell there's a little bit different um, arrangement of the camera and the outside if you had the other one side by side. There was also a Pro 2 light, uh, which can be known by the different colored shell on the outside. Both those models are no longer sold. Uh, customers may have them or maybe they'll pump on the uh, secondary market, but the Pro 2 is the main uh, model. Um, it's infrared structure light. Is, is the measurement sensor on board. So what does that mean? This actually has a real life measurement tool on board. So it's measuring real distances. It also has great pictures. I think it's uh, just about 134 megapixels combined. So it's a really good image. So to connect it, we have a quick release clamp or clamp and it's a square rounded off square shape on the bottom of the camera. There's a motorized um, uh, part of this that actually rotates the unit. So what we're doing is attaching it to a tripod to allow it to rotate. Uh, so I'm gonna quick put it on this tripod over here. You just wanna slide it through that cam that's on there uh, and tighten it down. It's uh, a small little um, bracket uh, with a threaded hole in the middle. There are a number of different models on the market, but essentially what we're doing is converting a regular tripod, similar to this one here. And you take this, this tripod by itself, um, a Pro 2 is able to attach to this, but it takes a little more time. And, and this is of course a quick release. The idea is you place this on, camera is attached, why I'm taking it off is uh, something I'll cover later on is the, the BLK360 laser. So this is a bracket uh, for that device. So changing them back and forth, but for this, we're to focus on just this Pro 2. So all of the units, including this one, communicate with our capture app. The capture app is the device, um, is, the, is the app that controls the device. So this I already set up to communicate with this device here. And so what it does is it looks, uh, as it rotates, it takes six stationary positions. I've already connected this to Wi-Fi. Uh, so you wanna go to your Wi-Fi uh, on board your uh, iPad uh, and connect to the device over Wi-Fi. Uh, just to know it's not Wi-Fi like the internet. Uh, it transfers data wirelessly, but this is not connected to the open internet, this device talks to that camera. So I mentioned before six positions, it rotates. So what I'm gonna do is, is pop back into the, to the capture. I've already captured some, some spaces in here or some, some positions. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna rotate and look all over the place. It's gonna look for uh, uh, the images, it'll snap pictures, and it'll take measurements at the exact same time. While I do this, uh, uh, it's best to have the operator not in the way, but for our purposes, you'll be able to see what goes on. When it's stationary, it's snapping that picture and making those measurements. It does it simultaneously. It's about 18 seconds for the whole rotation. What it does is it's looking for if you've taken more positions earlier, it's looking for features in the space. It's trying to identify where it is to place this last position accurately. Now, I've already done positions in this place, so I'm not sure if it's gonna line up exactly well because um, things have moved since I last captured, um, but it's now sending the information from the device over to this uh, location here. And uh, it then, tells it that uh, to align. Now, this is a, is a failed alignment uh, and it's a good ex exposure to it. And the reason it's failing is because I've moved the locations. I'm standing here. 
Uh, behind the camera, there's a number of chairs that have moved around. The space has moved uh, a lot. So uh, essentially what, what happens in, in, in the requirement for a successful position is that previous scans uh, work, that, that, that they align, that they overlap. Um, when a person moves this camera around, it typically is about uh, five paces, I like to say. Um, so somewhere around five to eight feet or 1.5 to 2.5 meters in distance steps makes a lot more sense. Um, the reason I'm saying this now is I'm going back into this same device. It was a failed alignment because I moved so much equipment in the area. I'm gonna start a new scan and it'll control the camera one more time. Okay, when it's stationary and staring at me, I'll get that image. So I'll make sure to smile at the camera when it, when it rotates toward me. But as it takes that snapshot, again, it's measurements, real measurements. This device takes real measurements and takes real snapshots. This is different than some of these small 360 cameras, which we'll cover on another, uh, um, another uh, episode, I guess. But essentially what this is, is, is uh, it's transferring the data over right now to the iPad. It's very quick, the transferring time. Sometimes if you're in a space with a busy Wi-Fi area, this transfer time might slow down. But as you can see, it's made a position in this space. And so the next thing I do is I move that five to eight feet. Now I don't need to do that five to eight, it'll work closer. So I'm gonna put these tripod legs down and imitate, uh, replicate that same process again. And it's close enough to that last spot on the table. Make sure it's nice and level. It can be crooked or, or slightly off center. It'll still capture, but the ending result will be sort of angled. So positioning it that way, I'm gonna run it one more time. I'm moving myself back to where I was previously. I think that helps alignment most when you are uh, avoiding being coming three-dimensional data that will mess up your scan. So one more time, smiling. Um, and then after this is finished, I'm gonna move it one more time. I think you'll get a good idea of what's happening here. Um, one of the biggest things that's important to focus on all devices, including, including this one, is to make sure that you understand what the end user wants to see. The person sitting at their workstation. Are you capturing or viewing the item and perspective that you want to see at the end of the line? That's the most important one. So this was a successful alignment. The position of the device does not matter. Um, you can rotate it as much as you'd like. The first scan position, I would recommend doing it true or straight on with a wall that will make the uh, position on your screen more straightforward. So I'm lining it uh, up, it's, it's pretty much in the same area, but I'm moving back to that same location I was previously. I'm gonna run it again. This is really quick and uh, this process, the benefits of this device is that it's very, very rapid. And you might say, oh, well, these little 360 cameras are really fast too. It's just a snap. But you or yourself are in the area. I can walk around this unit when I'm walking through the field. Um, this is a, a very, very, very strong tool. And overall, really what it is, is it's measuring real distances. There aren't a lot of cameras or devices that measure real distances and snap pictures. It's, we do both um, at Batterport, both happens. Um, on the next uh, piece, I'm gonna cover the uh, 360 cameras and the one after that, I'll cover the BLK 360. But what I, I'm gonna uh, focus on, uh, on the next one is how it's just images being used primarily by those 360s and by smartphone capture, your iPhone, or Android device using its imaging uh, sensor on board, the camera, on board your cell phone, the non-LIDAR version, uh, we're gonna cover that next. And the success of 
360 cameras and smartphone capture is due to devices like the Pro 2 measuring real distances and taking real snapshots at the exact same time. This is the data set generator, the core of why um, the whole Matterport platform really works well. It's this proven data set. So the Pro unit is the default camera. I think the majority of applications that Matterport uh, users uh, encounter, this device can handle. So I hope this was helpful as a, uh, a summary of the Pro 2 device. Um, quick hits, it's light, I think it's just under eight pounds. It's durable, it's not quite a tough book from Toshiba, you can toss it down the steps, uh, but it's quite durable. Uh, it is repairable. Uh, our own team at Matterport uh, and Sunnyvale services these for customers. Um, so we are able to service these devices. Um, this device is made by Matterport. So it is the only device uh, offered by Matterport. Um, the rest of the devices that are supported are, are manufactured from other manufacturers that are being supported through the Matterport platform and Matterport Pat Capture app. Uh, so once again, uh, Pro 2 unit is the one. And also consider when you're doing it, uh, tripods, case, this is a nice hard case, bunch of brands out there on the market, but think about investing in this kind of thing. Uh, it's very, very useful and helpful, but I can also put it in a, in a backpack, a uh, knapsack type of a thing and go on a bicycle uh, with a Pro 2 uh, in the back of it as well. So consider that as, uh, as well as um, is a mobile device that a customer can take or a user can take. It's not specifically for hard cases and official days like that. So it can be used a lot as the go-to device. Um, I recommend using it at least once a week on a construction site. That's what I used to do in construction project management. Come Friday afternoon, all the uh, workers on that job site knew that the Matterport camera was going to come through, the Pro 2. It's going to scan everything and give a good update for the next week's work progress. Uh, so if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but uh, I'll have this scan uploaded, and you can uh, also refer to that 